Okay guys, I'm going to do a little video here on how to make fermented feed. I haven't been using fermented feed recently only because I haven't had um, my barn heated to uh, stop it from freezing. So I'm going to start a new batch now that it's finally starting to warm up a little bit. I'm going to start at small scale. I've never, I've never started it this small before, but um, my thoughts are is that once I get a good ferment going, I'll just add it to a bigger bucket and go from there. So first things first, I'm going to use a mason jar because I'll be able to leave this in my house and it won't be a big pile of yuck. And I've got my layer mash. This is going to be for my chickens and my ducks. Um, some people get turned off of mash because you're used to pellets or crumbles, but this will ferment so much easier. At least it has in my experience and it's far cheaper. I get it from my local mill and it costs about half of what it costs to get feed at like a big box store. I think, uh, I think it was eight dollars and 80 cents, I think is what this cost me for a 50 pound bag. And it actually has more protein too than what um, the local big box store offers in my area. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and fill this as I make a mess. Probably about halfway full. Oop. Yeah, it's gonna swell a little bit. So I'm gonna actually take it down a little bit because it'll swell as it soaks up. All right, now I have warm water here. Now you can start this larger scale, like in a bucket and that would be fine. But just don't ever put a lid on it because if you put a lid on it, as it ferments, it'll get pressured and yeah, it's going to pop that lid right off and explode. I just realized I didn't grab anything to stir this with. So, oh, here we go. Let me just use this old pencil. I'm out in the shed. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to stir this down. It's kind of like oatmeal. Look at that in there. Yep. Now, as the feed ferments, it will actually um, be easier for your animals to digest. You can do this with whole grains as well. The only thing I suggest um, is not to do it with like a sweet feed because you can actually accidentally make alcohol <laughs> from all the sugars. Now, sometimes this will actually create more protein so that the food will be a higher quality. And because this will break down a little bit, like I said before, your animals will fully digest this. And it'll be really, really nutritious for them. It'll also naturally have probiotics in it, so that'll help their digestion. And it'll be good for their bodies. Now it's pretty well stirred. I'm going to add a little bit more water because this will settle and swell. So I'm going to go ahead and fill this all the way to the top about here. Not quite full. I'll watch it, and if I notice it's starting to get too much, I'll take some feed out and add more water. What's important is that once it starts, it's already settling right now almost. Um, what's important is that you have the feed completely covered with water. This will stop it from decomposing or breaking down like rotting. So you keep a nice layer of water above it. And... Um, yeah, it's actually settling really fast. Now with this, it can take about four to seven days. What I'm going to do is uh, keep checking on it throughout the week. And I'm going to stir it several times a day. And like I said, I'm going to keep it inside so it won't accidentally freeze or anything. And my chickens and ducks do very well on this. They uh, lay great eggs. They're very healthy. And you can actually begin to feed them less feed, like from what you normally feed if it were dry because it'll be a higher quality and a better protein content so that's great another great thing about this is is that sometimes you have chickens that don't like to keep up drinking as much water as they should when you feed this it will be kind of like an oatmeal consistency and it'll be uh you know quite watery and it helps your animals stay hydrated and it's very good for winter use as well if you have a heated place to keep it where it won't freeze because it'll help them stay hydrated through the winter when they might not be drinking as much water as they should. Um, I'll update this. I'll, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I'll update a video here in a couple days and we'll see how it's going. Or if I can, I'll try to get a daily video to show. If this begins to go bad, like I've said before, um, you will know 
there's a lot of questions about does it smell right? Does it look right? In my past experience, in a few of my failures, either it'll smell incredibly strong, like alcohol, and you will know it'll smell like straight up alcohol, or if it's gone bad, it will smell rotten. It'll smell like a dead animal, pretty much, and there won't be much question to it. It should smell like a nice sourdough or like a yeasty scent once it's begun to really ferment really well. And that'll make you, um, that will help you know that it's actually doing what it should. It should have that sour yeasty smell. It should um, begin to bubble as it ferments over the next couple days and get nice and bread smelling. And then I'll be able to transfer all this to a bigger bucket with more feed and more water and do a larger scale because I have 30 to 40 birds right now and this is going to help them a lot. I'm really excited. So if you guys have any questions, I'll do my best to answer them and I will try to do an update video every day until the ferment is complete. So thank you guys for watching. Bye.